Today is Wednesday, July 24th, 2024. Welcome to GFG News, where we give a biblical bias to the current events of the world. We look at the world around us and we see the things that are happening and we look at what is the word of God say, not does what is that political party or that political party or people that are just wanting to drive up ratings, what do they say? But what does the word of God actually say about the things taking place? I truly believe that we are living in the end times and that every day we are seeing events take place that are spelled out within the word of God. And I also pray that this source of news gives you comfort uh, because instead of when I see events that seem out of control, it comforts me to see that God is in control of all of these things, that he holds the times and the seasons in his hand and that hey, really nothing any of us can do about it. His plan is walking forward and it's a beautiful plan. So today, Yellowstone eruption, goodness gracious. Now, what they're referring to this is really kind of a small hydrothermal explosion or a mini eruption. Uh, but what people are saying is ultimately a geyser in the Biscuit Basin, that's just a few miles north of Old Faithful, uh, ultimately had a large eruption described by witnesses as first a lot of steam came out and then a small explosion where massive amounts of rock and dark clouds came out. A lot of those rocks came smashing back down onto the boardwalk. Um, and we haven't seen anything like this in quite some time. Now, what I will say about Yellowstone is, uh, you know, it's a super volcano. And there is a moment in time, in the end times, uh, that some sort of bottomless pit opens up and so much smoke comes out of it uh, that it darkens the whole earth. Now, when I was a kid, I remember when Mount St. Helens erupted and it, it was dark or all around there. It was like nighttime. Um, and some of that ash literally did a circle around the earth. Uh, now it's just a tiny little mountain compared to something like Yellowstone. Um, it wouldn't take much. Joel also refers to as the sky just closes like a curtain, just scrolls over it. So we're going to take a look at that verse real quick as we kind of look at Yellowstone and its rumblings or many eruptions. Um, because I, you know, when I read these verses and I think about, well, where would that bottomless pit on earth be? Uh, Yellowstone makes sense to me, or something like Yellowstone. So we're going to go to Revelation 9, starting verse 1. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Now, prior to this event, um, a third of the earth was darkened. And now with this event, the entire earth is darkened. So I guess what I'm going to say, if you're worried about something like Yellowstone darkening the earth, because if it erupted, it would definitely darken the earth. This event will not, I mean, according to the word of God, this is not going to happen until the fifth trumpet. Uh, and there's quite a bit that happens before that. I mean, meteor hits the earth, a third of the earth, a third of the population of the planet's killed, a third of the earth is darkened. Like there's so much. The Antichrist has to declare himself to be God. You know, there's so much that has to happen before this thing happens. Uh, so I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, it, it's a bubbling pool of eruptions, <laughs> that Yellowstone. So, you know, if you've been there, it's just boiling everywhere. So these little mini eruptions, you know, you don't have to flee Wyoming, I guess is what I'm getting at. Also, in the news, Netanyahu, of course, is in the United States, visiting with all the presidential candidates, trying to really secure up a good relationship and also trying to sure up um, showing the Israelis that he is going to 
retain the U.S. allies, which is going to be critical to the war. Um, I also want to remind you that those who curse Israel will be cursed, and those who bless Israel will be blessed, according, according to the word of God, Genesis 12, 1 through 3. As we see mass demonstrations and protests, uh, not just across this country, but across the world, um, and not only are we seeing mass demonstration and protests specifically today in the U.S. because of Netanyahu's visit, but we're also seeing mass protests from House of Representatives in our government. And, uh, you know, this is critical that we always be blessing Israel, not just be neutral, but be blessing Israel, uh, regardless of how you feel about this situation. Uh, you know, I've read so many things in the Word of God of warfare that took place with the Israelis that I that God instructed them to do things that I thought that is terrible. But His ways are higher than my ways, and His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. You know, when He tells them to go into a city and kill every man, woman, child, and animal, anything that is living, to me, I'm like, boy, that is brutal, but. His ways are higher than our ways. And in those moments in time in Israeli's history, they were cleansing that land, paving the way for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the end times, there will be a, a, another Elijah, just like there was when Jesus came. Uh, John the Baptist was that other Elijah, spoken of by Malachi, uh, that came and paved the way for the coming of the Lord. Well, there will be the spirit of Elijah in the end times, where many people will be prophesying and paving the way for the coming of the Lord. And part of that is really the warfare that takes place in Israel. And it's very important that we stay on the blessing side of things. Um, and if for some reason our government shifts uh, which it will, according to the word of God, because the world's armies will come up against Israel and we will be included in that. That's a whole other story, but Genesis 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your kindred and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So as we're watching these demonstrations, we're really just watching people curse themselves. Uh, be cautious how you speak openly about the nation of Israel. All right, the 2024 Olympics beginning Friday, opening ceremonies in Paris, France. Something peculiar about these open ceremonies and really kind of a first is France has really attempted to put not just the games in the streets of Paris, but also the opening ceremonies instead of a stadium, which is really what we've done for the last hundred years. But included in that is the Seine River and ultimately the parade of athletes, 10,500 athletes will be in boats. Uh, really an interesting concept. We should be prayerful for these Olympics. Obviously, the Olympics are really kind of an opportunity to unite the world in, in some way, at least through the love of sports. So be in prayer for the Olympic Games. Now on to a segment that I keep at the end, which is the red or blue pill. It's ultimately your opportunity to kind of keep on living that sweet little life where nothing ever goes wrong and everything's just the way you think it's going to be, uh, or you could take the other pill and actually look inside God's word and see the reality of what actually is happening uh, that is probably very different than what you've been taught. So if you don't want to see that sort of thing, you want to keep living that life, go ahead and switch it off now. But if you want to stay, we're going to take a look at Revelation 20, starting in verse 4. Now, what I'll say about this verse before we get there is this is when Christ returns. So in 19, Christ returns. He 
takes the Antichrist in the world army and destroys them, throws the dragon and all the other demons in the bottomless pit, uh, locks it up for a thousand years, and then this happens in verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So we're not finished here, we're gonna read on, but I wanna kinda of point out something real quick. Uh, what is happening here is Christ has returned. So this is a future event. These are the last days. He is about to reign. Like everything that this Bible talks about, the coming of a kingdom, this is the king returning and establishing his kingdom. And who will reign for a thousand years with him are those who are alive when he returns and did not take the mark of the beast. And those who were killed in tribulation for standing up for Jesus Christ, they are resurrected, but the rest of the dead continue to sleep. Now, this is critical because when we die, we kind of think that, you know, well, our loved ones are in heaven and they're there without us. Like, like they're there and we're here, but they're asleep. And this is something that we really kind of have to understand that, that, that we all arrive in heaven at the same time. Now, this is where the concept of purgatory came from. Um, because what the Catholics did is they took this, this, this concept, um, they took this truth, but they essentially said that we just kind of are almost like in limbo, like we're in like this white void nothingness, just hanging out, twiddling our thumbs, waiting, for this moment, but no, it's it's like a sleep. It's in the twinkling of an eye. Like when you die, you immediately wake up into heaven. Um, but if I die 40 years from now, I get to heaven the same time Abraham Lincoln gets to heaven. Like we both wake up in heaven at the same time and it was just like that. Like he just died in his mind. I just died in my mind because we're ultimately waiting for that final judgment. We don't necessarily wake up in heaven, we wake up to this, Revelation 20, starting in verse 11. And this is after the thousand year reign of Jesus. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Here, death and Hades and everything involved with death is, you know, is gone like it's gone. The sea gave up the dead. So everybody who drowned in the sea and you know, all those people that are at the bottom of the sea, this is their moment. And then the people in the ground, this is their moment. Like they're, this is their moment. This is the second resurrection. So ultimately what you have is you have two resurrections of the dead. You have the first resurrection, which is only those who died in tribulation. Uh, then you have the second resurrection, which is everybody else, um, all of humanity. Um, now there's also really interesting, uh, verses that we're going to go to. And I want to kind of point out that when I say that, you know, cause don't, I don't believe in purgatory. That's an invented thing by the Catholic church because of this, but also what we see when we look at the throne room of God. Now this is not what we're looking at is we're not looking at heaven. We're looking at the throne room of God. These are two totally different places. But what we see here in the throne room of God is we actually see the souls of people who were killed in tribulation pleading with God to hurry up and conduct justice. We're going to take a look at that. 
When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. So here's people, you know, so if you're in tribulation and you get killed standing up for Jesus Christ, this would be you. And they're there and they're conscious and they're saying things to God. Yet, in that same moment, he's saying, well, you know, just rest a little, you know, you're just going to have to sleep a little bit longer until that moment in Revelation uh, 20, where Christ returns and only those who are killed in tribulation are then resurrected, which is exactly what it says here. And a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. Then they're resurrected. So this is, you know, an incredibly fascinating thing because it's almost like we're like in and out of sleep in a weird way because even when Saul um, hires the witch to call up, um, she was, I believe, not Elijah, but he calls up the, the prophet. I apologize. I, it just came to me as I thought about this. He said, what'd you do waking me up, man? Like, like, come on, stop. Like I was asleep. You woke me. What's up? Here's what God has to say to you. Um, who was that prophet? Put it below. I'll look it up here in a little bit. Uh, but anyhow, we clearly have this ability to be asleep and then wake up. And then, you know, if God deems it necessary for us to wake up. And it, it's just fascinating. And, and even when we look in, you know, 2 Corinthians uh, or 1 Corinthians at the end, where he says, and even in Ephesians says, well, you don't, not all of us will sleep. And he doesn't describe, like he uses the word sleep for death. Fascinating. So um, just, you know, the reality is, is that some of us will wake up at different times, but those times are determined by God and God alone. Um, and really a mass, seemingly a vast majority of humanity uh, will be resurrected really right as earth is decreated. Um, heaven and earth fade away and, and the new Jerusalem is brought to us. That the, the streets of gold, the pearly gates, all that stuff. Like we all get there at the same time. And that's something that we really, it's just hard to fathom for a lot of people, including myself. But the reality is too, is that God lives outside of time. So like in my, you know, in my feeble earthly mind, I think, well, you know, they got to wait, but it's all at the same time, if, if that makes sense. Um, we, our feeble mind sees a timeline, so it's explained as sleep. But God lives outside of time. He's living the beginning, middle, and end all at the same time. Um, and it, it, it's just something we got to wrap our head around that the laws of physics don't apply to this situation. So uh, it is a twinkling of an eye. You know, I don't, you know, it, it, it's something that we just have to kind of realize that God's outside of time. We can't even begin to understand a fraction of this. Um, our physics and our science can't apply here. And in the end, it's important we get there, uh, but don't believe in that, that that purgatory thing where your loved ones are just floating in a white nothingness. Like, no, 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 don't don't think of them that way, because uh, that's just made up by man. So there you go. There's our news for Wednesday, July 23rd. God bless you all.